guys, here it is. My super easy, lazy girl sourdough recipe that literally takes about 10 minutes of actual hands-on time to make these delicious, beautiful loaves of bread that use only three ingredients. Crazy, right? Flour, water, salt. That's it. And you get this. It's like magic. It's witchcraft. I don't even know. It's just beautiful. All right. Let me take you back to late last night, right before bedtime, and I will show you how I make these lovely, delicious, sourdough tasting loaves without spending hours following a traditional sourdough recipe. All right, though, first things first. Okay, if you know how to make sourdough, do not watch this recipe. Okay, just don't. Save yourself the time. Go and watch a proper sourdough recipe. It'll show you all of the stretching and the proofing and the all the other things that you have to do to make sourdough like officially sourdough. This is a bread recipe that is for people who are time poor, who would like to eat simple breads but don't want to babysit it the whole time that it needs to be doing its thing. So this is my tried and tested lazy girl sourdough recipe. It is almost identical to the overnight artisan bread recipe that I'm sure you guys have seen all over the place. It uses yeast. This one is almost exactly the same except we're going to use sourdough starter. So you're going to need some of this. This is sourdough starter and in typical lazy girl sourdough bread fashion you don't want to have to make this yourself you can there's a whole heap of recipes online it's pretty much just flour and water you feed it every day for about a week it does its thing it gets weird and funky but it's okay if you either a don't have the time b are slightly scared of it or C, live in a caravan where you cannot regulate the temperature so that you can actually ferment the sourdough starter, then what you need to do is jump on Facebook and ask in your local community group, hey, has anybody got any sourdough starter that they would really just like to share and give to a new family? And most of the time, somebody will put their hands up and go, yep, I've got sourdough starter you can have, and this is how I got Little Johnny. Now, Little Johnny does have a story I put a request out. Well, actually, it wasn't even me. It was my friend who did it for me because that's how lazy I am. She put out a request in her local community group. She knew that I was coming up to visit. She knew that I wanted some sourdough starter, so she got a head start on it for me. Put out a request in the local Facebook community group, said, has anybody got any sourdough starter? They would be happy to pass on to somebody who would like to try their hand at baking. And one guy, his... Facebook name was Johnny Bravo, which is a cartoon character from way back in the day. Anyways, reached out and said, yes, I've got some, you can have it. Now, just to clarify, Johnny Bravo is not his actual real name, but anyways, I went and got my sourdough starter from a guy known as Johnny Bravo. Um, so his sourdough starter came with a little bit of a story. He called it Frank Sinatra, is his sourdough starter and I felt like my sourdough starter needed a name and I didn't know of anything better than to call it Little Johnny. So that's what he's named. Little Johnny. Little Johnny lives in the fridge. I feed him once a week because I'm lazy. Remember? Lazy girl. Sourdough. Anyways, um, I have passed on some sourdough starter to other people and they get Little Johnny Jr. <laughs> so if you see me and you get some of my sourdough, that is the story behind why it's called Little Johnny Jr. Anyways, Little Johnny lives in the fridge and I pull him out once a week to feed him. And while I'm doing that, we may as well make some bread. So that is what I did last night. Let's go back to the beginning and I will show you how I make my lazy girl sourdough. Also, please remember, if you know how to make sourdough properly, don't watch this video. And if you'd like to know how to make sourdough properly then don't watch this video. If you'd like a really easy entry level recipe that uses sourdough starter and isn't quite as intimidating as the 50 step other recipes that you see online, give it a crack. 
see what happens. My bread turns out pretty good every time. There you go. All right, so what we're going to need to do our Lazy Girl sourdough starter is some kitchen scales. I picked these up from Kmart for about $12. You'll need a large bowl and a tea towel. Um, some plain flour. This is just plain old cheap flour. It's not even bread flour. It's just plain old plain flour. Some salt, some water, and of course some sourdough starter. Now I got this one uh, gifted to me from somebody who'd already started it, um, but it is literally just flour and water that has been fermented together and goes all bubbly. So this is straight out of the fridge. I haven't done anything with this yet and it needs to be fed. So have a quick look in here. You can see it's a little bit bubbly, but it definitely needs a feed and I don't have time to activate and wait so in proper lazy girl style we're going to feed this first and we're going to use inactive starter to make our bread so I'm going to start off by tearing off my scales and I'm going to feed my starter with 50 grams of flour just going to pop that straight in and 50 grams of water. Just gonna quickly mix that together with a fork. just until it's nice and combined and there's no big lumps. Right, that's just to feed our starter. At this point this could just go straight back in the fridge and it'll be okay for another couple of days but while I've got it out and while I'm feeding it I'm gonna make some bread. So um, I don't discard which I know is first rule that I've broken second rule that I'm about to break is I'm going to use cold starter straight out of the fridge um, that hasn't peaked or anything like that so again we're going to tear off and using a large bowl I'm just going to pour in somewhere between 75 grams um, up to 150 I've done but I'm going to aim for about 75 grams of inactive starter all right that's not bad 78 that's close enough again lazy girl doesn't matter if it's not perfect all right so that is it for our starter at this point. I'm just going to put the lid back on and put it straight back in the fridge. And like I said, this will be fine for another couple of days. It's been fed. I have technically, I suppose, discarded a little bit off. So I suppose I am using the discard. Um, and that just stops it from ending up. If you just keep feeding it, eventually this jar will be full and it won't have any more room to grow. All right, so let's get started on our actual bread. So I'm going to tear this off again. So my weight now is back to zero and I'm going to add in 350 mils of water. Straight in on my sourdough starter. Thank you. 
we're going to whisk that together. All right, we're going to tear that off again. So we're back to zero and I'm going to add in 500 grams of plain flour. and five grams of salt. So I'm just gonna crack this over the top and just take it up to 505. All right, and we're going to gently combine all of this together. It will be a bit of a loose dough, but that's okay. It's all fine. All right, it's a bit shaggy, so I'm just going to stop using the fork at this stage and we're just going to quickly shape it into a bit of a ball, it won't take much. I'm not even kneading it, I'm really just shaping it. Just making sure all of that flour is combined with that water. Okay. All right, this next step is optional, but I'm going to just spray a bit of oil over the top, which just stops it from drying out too much. Um, you can use glad wrap or cling wrap if you want to, but I'm just going to use a tea towel. And that's it. Tucked away, ready for bed. I'm just going to leave this for 12 hours on my bench. Now, it is pretty warm here at the moment. You do want it in a relatively warm kitchen it's probably i don't know getting down to about what do you reckon 20 degrees here overnight 21. yeah about that so this is just going to sit out on the bench um the because you leave it for 12 hours means that the temperature can be a little bit cooler and this will still work i've done this at about 15 degrees overnight and it's still been fine but there we go. That's put to bed for tonight and I will see you guys in the morning. All right, good morning. Let's see how our dough is going. Ooh, we'll put some light on so we can actually see. So it is uh, almost 7 a.m. So this has had 11 hours. And there we go, look at that. Ooh. All right, it's a little bit bigger than the last time that you saw it so this is literally just sat overnight um, the dough depending on the temperature uh, in your kitchen can sit between eight hours and about 16 hours the cooler it is the longer it can sit for the hotter it is the quicker it's going to rise um, and once it's doubled in size we don't want it to sit for too much longer than that but you've got anywhere between like I said 8 and 16 hours which is a huge variance in time and honestly I don't get too particular about it um, I usually do it fairly late at night right before I'm going to go to bed um, and then um, I'll get this started at about 7 o'clock in the morning so Let's get on to the next step. We are going to need just a little bit more um, plain flour. So we've got a dusted workspace. We're going to need some sort of something to cook it in. Um, you can use a Dutch oven. You can use just a tray. If you want it loaf shaped, like sandwich loaf shape, then you're going to need 
a loaf tin. Uh, have the option of having two loaf tins and creating a lid, which is sort of what I'm doing here with these two. Um, this is going to give you a nice crispy top. If you want a softer top, then cook it without a lid. Um, same with your Dutch oven. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. We're going to do a loaf tin. Which I'm going to line, just because that's what I prefer to do. You don't have to. This is non-stick. Um, so some of the recipes will say to preheat this in the oven when your oven's preheating. Um, again, Lazy Girl style. I don't do that. I just line this and then I will actually let the, the dough rest in here just simplifying all of the steps really so one of the things one of the reasons why I do use baking paper um, is because I'm not preheating the pan preheating the pan um, helps to stop the dough from sticking to it and then gives it a really nice um, finish so if you're going into a hot pan it'll create a nice seal on the bottom of your bread on the the dough that's actually touching um, the pan will be nice and crispy um, but I'm going to let this sit and shape in this pan so I'm going to line it as well all right let's get that out of the way now and let's get this dough out so my trick which I will try and do where you guys can actually see it all right lightly flour Now this will be a bit tacky, so I just scrape down the sides. Uh, I know, I know, there's just, I'm breaking all the rules, I know, it's okay, it works, it's fine, don't worry about it too much, unless you actually know how to make sourdough, and then just don't do it this way, okay? Right, scrape it out. Like that. Oh, it's a bit blobby. Yes, it's a little bit over fermented. It's fine. Don't worry. Don't stress about it. Just get it out. Okay? Look at that. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Smells lovely and sourdoughy though. Alright, so it's a bit sticky. So what we're gonna do is just turn it a couple of times with the spoon. Um I call it like, well it's like folding it. Some people, I think it's called the envelope style. I'm not really sure. But basically, you just want to keep picking up that flour that's on the board. I'm just folding it in. Once it's a bit more, less sticky, a bit more floury. Give this a couple of goes. Just stretch it out a little bit. Not too much though. Just to the point where it's really good and you can sort of work with it, which is where I'm at now. And then basically give it a nice tight roll. Like that. And so it's sort of loafy shaped. I really don't want to overwork it. And then we're back to our loaf tin Ta -da. okay and then that's step two or phase two we're done all right couple of options at this point we want to let this sit for its second rise so you can go ahead and put um 
a lid on it however you want to do that so I'm using the exact same sized loaf tin and I'm using it upside down as a lid uh, you can if you want to just of course cover it with a tea towel if that's what you've got um, I find that at this stage this will rise a little bit higher than the top of the pan so the tea towel is going to touch the dough which I don't want um, you could just make a lid out of anything really that you've got um, you could even use like tin foil aluminium foil to make another lid anyways all right so this needs to sit like this somewhere from an hour to up to 24 hours so at this stage you can now go and put this in the fridge and if you don't want to cook it for 24 hours I have left it for 24 hours in the fridge and it's okay uh, but we're gonna cook it this morning so I'm just gonna wait for about half an hour and then I'm going to start preheating my oven which takes about half an hour so there's my hour and then I'm going to cook it so we're just going to again put this aside I'm going to go and have a coffee and read a couple of chapters of my book and then I will come back and we'll finish this off. Okay, the oven has come up to temperature, which you want to be aiming for about 220 degrees Celsius. This is our little bread here. Um, I could leave this for a bit longer and it could rise a little bit more, but... Um, I do need to cook this one this morning so we are pushing the friendship here a little bit but as you can see it's still risen and it'll be fine it'll just be a little bit denser this one um, like I said before I'm pretty sure if not um, sorry if I'm repeating myself if I have already said this but um, so this can go in the fridge for up to 24 hours before you cook it mine's just pushing an hour now so I'm really getting this in the oven as quickly as I possibly can so like I said this could sit for longer and it'll rise again a little bit more so the next thing you want to do um, optional um, I am using a bread lame um, you can just use a really sharp knife this was gifted to me so um, from a friend so I just like to use it because I can and we're just going to put a couple of slices in there. Here we go. That's just going to help that um, when it expands so that it doesn't crack. It just gives the moisture somewhere to go. And speaking of moisture, we're just going to add a little bit of extra moisture back. I'm just going to put a couple of, just a bit of a sprinkling of moisture on our bread not a lot that's it all right we're going to put this in to cook so if you are cooking it with the lid on do 20 minutes with the lid on 20 minutes with the lid off that's going to give you a nice really crispy crunchy top if that's what you like on your sourdough if you want a softer top more of a sandwich loaf which is what we're going for today I'm going to cook it with the lid off um, I'm going to still give it 40 minutes but I am going to turn it because my oven is hotter at the back cooler at the front I'm cooking in a caravan so you know we've got to work with these things but all right let's get this in the oven 20 minutes and then we'll turn it 20 minutes 40 minutes total at 220 degrees There we go. Ooh. Nice little sandwich left there. It's a bit burnt on top. But it's all right. Um, I'm going to let this sit for 10 minutes in the pan and then I will take it out and put it on a cooling rack and let it cool down. All 
Alright guys, well this is me and my lovely loaf of Lazy Girl sourdough bread getting ready to sign off. I really just need to put this back on the cooling rack and let it finish cooling. The last tip that I'm going to leave you guys with is always leave your bread until it is completely cooled. I know it smells absolutely amazing and you just want to eat it right now and cut into it right now. But what happens when you cut into it when it's still warm is some of that moisture actually escapes because you've cut it uh, and that's why your bread goes staler quicker than what it does this is a fresh loaf of bread it's not going to last a week like supermarket bread um and it's not going to last a week because it's delicious anyway so people are just going to eat it but you want to wait until it's completely cool before you cut into it and then it won't go quite as stale and it'll be nice so the next day if you have any left for the next day <laughs> Anyways, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. If you do try this loaf, let me know. It always turns out slightly differently, but I don't mind because that's the nature of homemade bread. Every loaf you make is different. But what I have found is that if you have a proper active starter, and even though I don't take care of my little Johnny very well, and I only feed him once a week, and I use essentially discard, I use inactive starter to make my sourdough, because it sits on the bench and ferments overnight, it just it just works. It just does. And then it's awesome. Um, so let me know. If you give it a go, let me know how you go. Let me know what you think. Easy, entry-level sourdough. Maybe we should stop calling it Lazy Girl Sourdough. And we'll call it entry-level. But I don't know. Lazy Girl Sourdough, it just kind of has a ring to it. So that's what we're going to call it. All right, I'm going to put this down and stop playing with it. Because otherwise... I'm going to drop it on the ground and that'll be very sad. I hope you enjoyed today's video as always. If you did, if you could please give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. It lets me know the kind of content you guys are enjoying and what you'd like to see more of. And if you'd like to see more crazy recipes like this from me or just other stuff, things that we're up to, all that kind of jazz, then don't forget to hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't already. It is the best way to stay up to date with me and a really easy way to help support my channel and I really do appreciate it. Love hearing from you guys so let me know in the comments if you guys give this a go what you think please <laughs> if you know how to make proper sourdough don't start at me okay I know I know all right let's just leave it at that I know I understand but this this oh, so quick so easy so great for people who are time poor but still want to eat homemade sourdough tasting bread and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day. I hope you're having a great week and I do hope to catch up with you in my next video. Until then, take care, my friends, and enjoy your beautiful bread. <sighs> all right, I gotta go. See ya. Bye. You've already taken a bite from yours. Hmm. Best bread ever. It was pretty good for lazy sourdough. Yeah. You should have made some for you guys. <laughs>